Um, any anything else from you folks that's more urgent? I just have just like general uh, longer term updates. Uh, yeah, I have an issue that I, I'm waiting for your feedback, but I pinged you on Slack. I don't know if you want to tackle it on Slack or on this call, which is regarding portfolio management and some issues that turns out we don't have capacity on the back end uh, and okay. we should replace yeah, no, yeah. that. Yeah, let's, we can, let's talk about those quickly then. Right. So let me just put the link there. What's your plan? Uh, the agenda or wh wherever you want. Yeah, I'm just grabbing the link. Sorry, I should have gotten right, yeah, it no, first. No, 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 that's fine. All right, so. So if you follow that link, it was the link that Kushal shared. I'll, I'll, up, I'll update the link to have only the ones. Oh, wait, I think he already unassigned himself. No, never mind. I think he already in, in, in assigned himself from it. Let okay. me just go with another link. So if you have the links at hand, definitely help me out. Sorry, which one was that for? Uh, is the one that Kushal uh, highlighted and then we turned out not to have capacity on the back end? The specific one that he's going to work on. Uh, I just wanted to see that. So there are two of them that he couldn't work on because he didn't have capacity. Okay. Uh, I didn't actually, uh, I, I remember vaguely what they are, but I don't have them open. I'll find them just now. So it's the uh, autocomplete milestone and the sort direction one, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Epics. So uh, those ones Kushal cannot do? Is that, is that what you... No, the, the thing is that it could, but it turns out it's front end and back end. Oh, okay. And, um, uh, they didn't get to that part, so they ran out of capacity before reaching those. Okay. So that means that instead of having front end working on something that the back end can't work, right, right. we're proposing removing those two. And mm -hmm. if you find something that is equivalent, there are a total of six points in terms of weight. If you can find a replacement for portfolio management issues, that would be great or plan. Uh, Kushal is fine taking something else, but um, so it's up to you. Just, just see how you want to do this. Do you want to react and grab something out of backlog or something that you have prepared, um, or I can I can find things for him to work on. That's not an <laughs> issue, but I, I definitely want to give you the opportunity to uh, sure. be agreed. Yeah, if you give me two seconds, let me. Um... You also can do that after the call if it's preferable for you. Uh, um... Basically, that's all. That's all the info we had for you at, on this topic is that. We need to make a decision regarding those things. Okay. Um, let's have, uh, I, I, I'm impatient, so I just want to decide. Uh, <laughs> let's have, removing a physical, uh, uh, and front end, right? You said, yeah, so this is, um, okay. So, uh, yeah, this is why we need to move ahead with design a little bit more, I think. Well, no, there's a lot, I'm just thinking portfolio management stuff. Okay, yeah, no, I know what to do. So there is an issue for, oh no shit, that's also backend. Um, yeah, so most of the stuff needs backend for portfolio management. So maybe next, next iteration we need to ask Sean for more help on portfolio management um, and, and, and re, re juggle it. So if that's the case, let's have um, Kushal just push forward with the refactor that he wants to do. You wanna do that? Yeah, that, that, that sounds way. good. That, that, that sounds good to me. I think he has that. That might even in short shorten the the deadline for that because he was counting on eleven seven. I think to finish yeah. that. Yeah. Well, you know, he did a good job of like splitting into a couple issues. Like I think two. All right. I'll, I'll check with him and and then and then I'll I'll, I'll confirm with you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, cool. no, you, I mean, just let me know. You don't have to confirm. <laughs> <laughs> but I will let you know. Commit, I'll let you. commit and let me know. Commit and uh, let you know. That's yeah, fine. All right. It's, it's, it's somewhere in our handbook that we should do that. Um, uh, right. Okay, awesome. Uh, Nothing else from what I said. All right, that sounds good. Um, Pedro, anything from you before we, uh, I just have a couple of items that are not urgent. Um, so I wanted to let the team talk about anything that's- I'm, I'm okay. Okay, more urgent. Okay, great. So uh, same with Rami, please jump in if you have anything you want to talk about. Um, so if not, uh, like I mentioned in Slack, there's a bunch of things I don't know if this is a good idea, but I just started pasting a lot of things in the agenda at the top. Um, it might just get ever 
increasing, which sort of defeats the purpose, then like we're, we're inventing a new issue tracker inside a Google Doc. So that's sort of useless. I didn't feel like creating another label because, you know, these things get really messy. But, um, but these are the things that, that um, I've been thinking about a lot. Uh, so you can click through those ones. A lot of them, I think people on the call have been already responding for a couple of them. So, so that's really awesome. Um, so I just wanted to highlight a couple ones that are uh, I've been thinking about as of late. Doesn't mean that we'll do them right away, but it's, you know, just um, yeah, because like like you know, we 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 talk about something, and get excited about it, but it, oftentimes at GitLab we don't necessarily work on it. Um, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but that's that's how just how we roll currently. And so I want a couple of things I wanted to highlight um, is. Uh, filter by none and any in GitLab, so number five. So that's definitely something that I've not even put like timelines on. Um, I don't know if I slack people about this, but um, this came up because uh, our community is, is getting pretty good. I've noticed an a uptick in community or either that or I've just been better at responding. I, I don't know if it's because of just there's just more people now um, coming into GitLab. But there's just some inconsistency with filtering by none and any, and especially those two words and the ability to do so, and um, for various places inside GitLab for um, milestones, labels, assignees, and weight, in particular for both the web UI and API. And so I spend a little bit of time on Monday creating a bunch of issues there, and then I think either closing in or splitting out some issues that uh, people are complaining about. There was at least one issue where Apparently, we lost the ability to filter by one of those things in, in the mouse for, for milestones in the, in the search. So again, I don't think it's super urgent, these things. Um, these are just nice to have. Um, but what I found is a lot of community members are really wanting to participate. So I think it's pronounced Jake Kobo. One of our core team members was in one of them um, and, and created one of the issues. And then so... So I just cleaned that up and put it here, and he's already jumped in and said, I'm going to pick up two of them. So that's really exciting to me. Yeah, so, these are really nice as well from the, the contributor's perspective because, like, the scope's pretty clear, and right. it's not, like, a thing where you need, like, a bunch of UX input and a bunch exactly. of front -end input and a bunch right. of back-end input before you can even, like, get started. Like, right, you know, right. it's, a, it's a relatively, like, you know, well scoped down, and I see you created a bunch of issues, like, for each specific case. Right. Um, so right. it's a relatively well scoped down, down thing, which is uh, quite encouraging as a new contributor. You don't really want to dive into an issue with like a mm hundred -hmm. comments and <laughs> a bunch so, of like, you know, a, sort of um, a description that takes three pages to scroll down, right? <laughs> I think that's, that's right, quite right, 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 right. So no, no, that's a great point, Sean. Um, something that I, I assume was the case, but maybe I think you're confirming. So, so. I'm guessing there's a bino binomial, by by something uh, distribution of contributors, ones that are, well, I don't know, maybe it's more than that. So, so there's multiple factors. There's people that want to work on a big, exciting issue. There's people that want to contribute because they're just excited about coding for whatever reason. And they want to, whether they're experienced or not, they want to do small things um, because to get them in quickly or if they're new, just to because they're not confident yet. So. I, I'm, what I'm hearing from you is that 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 there's always enough of those cases and people that we should cater to them in this way. And then there's another batch of people that want to do some big exciting thing. Like Sid says, like let's do this, and then there's people jump in and talk, and then somebody starts writing code in it. But that never gets done, right? Like it's like two years before that MR gets merged, right? So I don't know about like how good those things are, um, or like what's the strategy there. But at least the, there's at least enough people that care about these ones, is what I'm hearing from you. Yeah, so like you know, the way I think of it is like obviously everyone can contribute to anything, um, but for somebody who, um, you know, a lot of the times people are interested in contributing to an open source project for, you know, maybe they use it, but maybe they're also just looking to improve their skills or right, they, right, you, know, right. you know, whatever. Um, it's really good to have those issues ready and available for people so we can just say these ones are, these ones are right. small in scope, they are, um, understandable like you know you can see what what's happening when you do them they don't involve like forging new territory um, yeah, yeah 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 so yeah i think i think they're really great to have and they fill gaps in our products so it's great for us as well exactly like, yeah i mean yeah um it's not not 100 altruistic but yeah oh well, no it's 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 win-win so um 
Okay, awesome. So thank, thanks for confirming that. So, so you know, folks, feel free to jump in and, and debate, discuss, um, and rip apart those issues, uh, both from a uh, design perspective and from like a scoping perspective. I, I just scoped them in a way that I thought would make sense, um, but it could, it could not make sense. Um, so please, if you have time or interest, do so. Uh, resolvable discussions, um, number six, is something that Tori and Dawei went back and forth for a long time in uh, trying to, to really make room for it in upcoming iterations. So that's why I started re-engaging them. Um, so again, I, I think, I don't know if Pedro, Pedro went and I went back and forth a little bit yesterday as well. Um, so I don't want to use too much of time here because it, it can get into really have complicated, you, really quick. I, I haven't checked if you replied to me, so. I, I think you, I, you I did. Now we, we can talk. Um, let, let, let's, let's save it, um, especially since it can get, <laughs> let, well, we can okay. come back to it. Let's, let's come back to it if okay. we have time. So that, no, let's do, I'm up in the agenda. But I, I like that discussion, so that's okay. That's yeah, good. so, and, and, and the reason why I wanted to break it down um, is there's a lot there and we're not going to do the whole thing all in one shot. And I think people are clamoring for, as Tori pointed out, uh, they're not uh, clamoring for resolvability, but they're clamoring for taking a comment and like Slack turning it into a thread. So, so we need to figure that out first, but I, I wanted to figure out the whole thing, which is, you know, sometimes that sounds scary, but figuring in this case, like figuring out three or four iterations, I think makes sense. So, so that's number six, custom fields we talked about last time. I don't think I updated this group and I still have a to do in my own list to, to probably update the MVC so that we do um, instead of freeform text. So this probably impacts a lot of Sean's comments earlier in the issue or Epic. Um, so instead of doing freeform text as an MVC, but to do like a, 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 a custom field where you choose a limited number so you can choose like uh, my example was like Android or, or iOS is a custom yep. field for an issue. And you can probably guess why, but uh, one of our uh, customers that I talked to said, the free form text field is useless. You know, you can't search on it. You know, somebody will, you know, my word, somebody will spell iPhone one way and somebody will spell it with like a lowercase P and I get annoyed when people do that um, and, and stuff like that. Right. So you can, you won't have anything consistent. Um, so they were saying that um, if you just have a freeform text field, then I might as well just put that in the description itself and then it's useless. So having custom field uh, should be enumerated, what would probably make sense. Or maybe like a number field. Um, but I, I think probably if we do a number field, maybe an enumerated field. So, so uh, I just wanted to call that out and I'll, I definitely need to update that epic with a discussion. Yeah, please do. Um, you can see there was a discussion in there about like the database, uh, database design. And we, we, we got some good news is that we can just assume that we'll use Postgres for this. We won't. Right, support. right. I saw that, so, that big discussion. So that gives, us, that, that gives us a bunch of good options. Um, right. Actually, I think the options don't help as much with the list type, but um, right. that, that, that's fine. Like, you okay. know, it's good to okay. have that decision made anyway. Um, and uh, look at it in more detail. So, yeah. That sounds good. Um, I wanted, to, I wanted to jump on this for real, real quick from a different Please. perspective. I don't think it has been discussed a little bit, but this problem that we're tackling was actually a very big problem for the HTML5 specification because we, up until then, they had like very specific semantics additions. And on HTML5, they introduced um, microdata, which kind of solves this problem oh, interesting. of having extensibility of vocabularies. What they sorted out was that they created this website called schema.org that has like predefined schemas that people can just, all right, how do I describe a pet? What mm. properties are there on a pet, for example? Right. And then you can have that, that sort of like um, consensus in schemas so that what for a platform, sorry, for a project is a platform, for another project is going to be platform as well. So that you know to have like one, you have platform, the other you have system, but they all mean the same thing. Right. So I, I, I'm just thinking that there's a big potential of like kind of learning from their experience. Mm. Uh, and I might jump on this issue later to try to share this there. Because it, it's more for a UX perspective, Pedro, how we can leverage this into making this a, a power, an even more powerful feature than just like searching, but more about discoverability and indexing this on the web, on the web as well as, as um, on the semantic web and stuff. So there is a good, a good potential there, but I just wanted to raise that. Uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more later, but it does sound a very similar problem, which is 
it changed the game for 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 semantic on the web. So sounds, sounds good. Really good. Yep. Thanks, Andre. Yeah. Please, please do jump in. I will. Uh, confidential comments, pin comments. Um, uh, yeah, people have been talking about that. We'll 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 need to do one of them. I, I don't want to do confidential description just yet, but again, I have a to do to continue some conversations that have been ongoing there. So feel free to click through. Uh, in particular to, to support the sales team and the product team uh, before we do like hardcore sales force integration, which I think would take more time. Um, but yeah, feel free to look at the, the reason I put them together is there's this like weird edge case. If you have a confidential pinned comment, then people who can't see confidential comments won't see the pin comment. But um, I talked to Yoba about this and like, we were like, yeah, it's, it's okay. So, you know, feel free to think about that. Um, number nine is something. Sorry, just on that, on that point. Wait. Uh, sometimes what what um, communities do for these sort of things, like they will put a box there saying that right. there's a comment there, it's just hidden. And this like, <laughs> it's a UX challenge. Like for instance, when, right, you right, right, yeah. when you delete a comment on a thread or on a conversation, the right. ones below might have reference to that one. Right, right, right. So if you have this sort of thing, the threaded comments that you mentioned earlier is right. definitely must so that all the threaded conversation about that. Um, yep, yep confidential comment is confidential as well. Right. Otherwise, you just like leak. So, so, like so curious, uh, Andre, the use case you mentioned in other places, is it the same use case as GitLab where uh, our confidentiality is about security? Uh, I, I can only think of two cases, security and like customer slash business strategy, blah, 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 right? So those are the only two use, use cases for us. Are, are those yeah. the same that you're thinking no. about? My, my use case, I was thinking more like on, on Imager or Reddit, when you delete a comment mm -hmm. and there's a thread on top of, on thread below it, like it will show deleted comments. Right, you, right, right. You still have the, the thread. Okay, okay. Uh, which sort of mentions that there was something there that you cannot see now. Right. But the thread is still there if you want to see it. Oh, uh, okay, okay. The, confidential, yeah, the confidentiality was more of a... So UX you wanna, yeah. Yeah, more of a UX challenge. If, you, if we want to reveal that to others who can't see it, just say, all right, there's something here that you can't see. I'm sorry. Right. Uh, it's confidential. Okay. That, that makes sense. Thanks. It's a challenge. Yeah. yeah. Uh, number nine, I think Sean already responded. Um, it's just one of those really crazy ones. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ping uh, Yob about this a little bit more, uh, but feel free to, to take a look there. Um, so that's number one to nine. We, we talked about all the things already. Uh, uh, autocomplete logic, this is getting really crazy as I was writing it up this morning. So instead of just like making people read it, if I'm going to talk about it, I'll just sort of point and click to different um, things that could happen. So what, what I'm referring to here is, so, so this is like, I haven't made this issue. Um, I, I try to uh, tell people that you can, you, you don't have to wait for an issue to be complete to share it, but like I definitely need to link to issues here. But um, there, there was a couple of issues that came across this week saying like, um, how should this be populated here? Uh, and then uh, how should, say for example, this be populated? Um, and then there, both in merge request or, or, and stuff like that. And then there's like um, uh, this, right? Uh, which is the same thing, I guess. Um, I think it's the same thing. So I don't know if that's, well, I mean, then it's, it's, you can't really assign to a group. So there's a bug slash UX tech that thingy. You, you can't. Well, you can't assign to a group, can you? Well, I don't know. With the quick action, I mean. Uh, I don't know. I think you can. It can will you? just. I think so, yeah. It will assign yes. everyone from that group. Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay, I, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it won't work on a merge request because uh, you can't have multiple assignees on a merge request, but it will work on an issue. And I think I accidentally did that yesterday somehow because I assigned Andre, Clement, uh, Tim, and somebody else from the front end team, like somehow. I don't even, I don't even know which group that was, but clearly I, I started typing Andre and. Uh, GL managers, uh, GF, FMN, FE managers or something. That was, that was probably the one, yeah. Um, yeah, um, I think it definitely makes sense. Uh, so just quickly, I'm going to add some feedback to the issue as well. Just quickly, one thing that um, is worth calling out is that, um, like I said, in merge requests, you can't have multiple assignees. So right. you, 
you wouldn't be able to like we shouldn't show a group there necessarily right um but we should for issues if you're in a GitLab install that does support multiple assignees for issues because obviously sure, it depends sure. on your license um but I do think it makes sense to include participants in right, both right, right. because right now it's kind of weird that if you use a quick action you can assign uh like a participant, like someone who says, I want to contribute this, like they will show up in that drop down. Right. Um, but but you can't assign them from the sidebar. And like right, I never know exactly, exactly, exactly. sidebar because I always have the sidebar collapse. So right, mean. right, right. Oh, so because <laughs> um, and with a quick action, user, you can yeah, find yeah. anybody who's a valid right. assignee because you can just type it, whereas you can't do it in that assignee drop down. So there's there's some wrinkles there, but I think it's definitely good to unify them as much as possible because at the moment. Right. That you right. can only do this from yeah. the quick action, which is kind of like a power user feature rather than like the main obvious way. Right, right. Yeah, no, I, I definitely wanted that that's that's the philosophy I was going for here, um, Sean. Not 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 necessarily even to 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 like prioritize this anytime soon, but just to make sure people are understanding what's like missing. And then when yeah. we have those crazy issues where people are like I, like I don't know when I'm staring at all those like technical discussions. First of all, I don't know what's going on. Secondly, I'm like I'm worried that people are are discussing things that maybe wasn't intentional, wasn't valid, and I don't want to waste everybody's time like fixing something that doesn't need to be fixed and stuff like that. So I, I wanted to have people recognize like intentionally we're doing certain things. Um, so for right, no, this, this issue is really good because for the, that other issue that I think you're talking about, like yeah. Nobody knows what it's supposed to do. <laughs> like, you know, right, right, right. Yeah. So, so sometimes, like, we, I, like yeah, we, I've been we, we know exactly what it does. Like, we can look at the code and see exactly what it does. But we don't know like, if it's intentional. It a bunch of changes, and like mostly people have tried to keep the same behavior, but it's really hard to figure out why the original behavior was that right, way. Right, right. So, so, yeah. Writing down what it should do is is a, a great okay. so step. Yeah. Th that's helpful to confirm this is not a waste of time. Okay. So because you know every time I do one of these, it, it gets a little bit unwieldy if I if I the scope is too crazy. And I, I wasn't even thinking of that particular terrible case that I just did. Right. So clearly this is another feature where you can do this from here. But what I wanted to just get clarity and consistency written down, but not necessarily implemented, but is um, I think, Sean, you brought one case in one of those issues about participants. So the, those lists here, right, this, the lists here and then the lists here should include participants at the top because I think that's somewhere in our code for one of those two cases. Um, so, so there's that crazy issue. So there's these two areas. And then the third area that I've identified, which is also related, at least from a UX perspective is this area, right? So this is like, it's also autocomplete dropdown. And so like, how does this work? Um, so I, I, I just wanted to get that all written down. Um, and, and so I, I mentioned, and there was one really interesting issue, uh, a side issue that, that I'll bring up, which is, um, when somebody leaves GitLab, I don't know if uh, any of you notice this, when somebody leaves GitLab, um, uh, sort of the, what, what managers like to do is just assign all those issues back to themselves. And so like Sarah wasn't able to do this because um, she was trying to do this and then like, oh my God, it doesn't work, right? Yeah. But then it does, right? So, <laughs> so like there's an issue somewhere here that, uh, that addresses that, but basically, there's like three confounding weirdness things here. Number one is that the, um, this person is no longer a project member or no longer a member of, of either the group or the project. So this person doesn't show up in this dropdown, right? But that person can still be assigned to an issue because you can use the quick action and the fact that that person was previously assigned to the issue, so they're still assigned to the issue. So the, the, it seems that the back end and the, the, the API, blah, 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 can still take any assignee, that's fine. But the, the, the front end UI is, doesn't pop that person up. So, so then that's confusing, right? So then there's like some gap there. So my comment in those issue and the, the, the big issue that I just uh, put here or wherever I put it says that in the ideal perfect world, you, whatever, Updates here should just be like a union of all the signees of all the issues that can be here. 
and my guess is that's like super impossible to build because like you have to keep track of assignees coming in and out for every single issue in the in all projects inside that group which is impossible I think, right i think it's yeah i don't know if it would be too bad um i think it would be a very long list is part of the problem especially for the author one not so much for the assignee one but for a public right. project author authors tend to grow quicker than assignees right because like right right exactly yeah 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 and then so because only project members can assign issues but anybody can create one right 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 right. exactly you're totally right sean and so but like i haven't heard anybody complain about this because like this is clearly this is the the edge case but no that brings up i'm a sure point. i've seen like an issue somewhere before that mentioned this but i don't remember it being like a thing people have been like clamoring for so um, right yeah, I was yeah, like, I, 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 I think it's definitely come up before, but it's not been like a thing where people have been like, oh my God, how come GitLab doesn't have this? Um, right, right. So that's why I was saying like, oh, we don't have to worry about that right now, but that's like a super nice to have in the future. But I, I didn't even think about your case, which is more compelling, Sean. Like the case that I just cited is, you know, a very rare case, but this is uh, the sort of the open source case is, is really obvious because I can't um, search on anybody else like say i have like five friends that i we are contributing to gitlab but we're not members of the group um so then how i can't search on them as an author but i, I guess this is, hasn't come up so far so um but anyways um so that that puts another wrinkle in it so I, that's why that issue is attempting to organize those ideas um so which i'll, I'll try to finish later um victor for for that case that you mentioned of sarah not being able to mm -hmm to get those issues you wanted. Do we have any particular issue or thought on improving the removal of a member from a group? Because at that moment, we can see that they have stuff assigned and we can propose an action. Uh, I'm just, I, I don't know, I've never seen that screen. I, I've never removed someone from a, from a group, so I don't know exactly how <laughs> right. it works. That, no, that's I'm pretty sure we already unassign people when they lose access to a group. So what I mean here is the distinction. So. If this was a private group, I am pretty sure Hazel would have been unassigned when she was removed from the group because she would no longer be able to see those issues. Because right. GitLab's projects are public and Hazel still has ah, okay. GitLab.com, she can still technically be assigned to those issues. She could just be like a community contributor, right? Like right, so yes. that that's the distinction there. And I I I think it would be nice to have an affordance, like you know, some kind of option to unassign those issues at that point. Um, although maybe that belongs more to manage or but, to assign um, to someone else, but yeah. yeah, exactly. But the, the, the basic feature kind of is there, but it doesn't work for us basically. Mm, right. That, that, yeah. No, but, but I really like how you're approaching the problem, Andre, like at the, like solving that use case specifically, I, I don't know if we'll ever build it or if it's high priority, but like it, it totally makes sense. That's when you address the problem. Which, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like when when you're making that action, you yeah, they're both the both ends of the same problem. But maybe we can improve that. Um, right. Yeah. But you, like you said, in terms of priority wise, it's such a yeah. Case, like how <laughs> I don't know how many companies prioritize offboarding flows. Well, uh, you know, <laughs> unless probably, you're I, like a high turnover company, in which you have probably have other problems. Already. Yeah. <laughs> the case, the case it's like a bunch of contractors or consultants. Um, okay, but okay. It's not like okay. a. It's That's not true. super common, but it is a it is a thing that happens, right? Okay. No. Yeah. Well, and you are I'm you are basically. Of, go ahead. No, I'm just thinking about that. The opposite problem is onboarding, right? So, like, I would think most companies and use cases, they're so like. Um, if we have a business, then we're probably going to have be onboarding people. So let's optimize for that. Let's not optimize for us going out of business, right? So but here's the thing. Here's the thing that I find interesting is that the onboarding is slow, right? It's a slow uptick of assignments. Mm, that's but true. The, okay. But the offboarding is abrupt and you have like right. a whole workload to pass. And in that's terms true. of experience, you're delighting the existing users, which is the admin. You're not delighting the people that are leaving the group, ah, or whatever. You're just, delighting just, the ones that are managing. Yep. Yep. That yep. Part. There's a lot more. Yeah. No, there's a lot more nuance. There nuance is, yeah. Anyway. And that's a good point. And then there's, yeah. And then like, whether it's the consulting thing and then there's the, I know in like really hardcore companies, there's like ridiculous scripts that like you, you, you fire somebody essentially, right. In the worst case. And then boom, suddenly they have, they like, I remember like, I've never, have I been fired? I've not, not for something that I did bad. I've been let go, 
but then uh, I remember when I quit companies and like the moment I leave the building, like I, I like my phone says like you no longer have access to the email. <laughs> like it's it's like immediate. Like they they flip a switch and then there's probably a script that like Google accounts is like disabled and it's scary. So like I, I may, maybe GitLab can do that also one day. So um, we'll, we'll we'll get there. Um, but anyway, so so that's that issue. But yeah, feel free to create an issue there, Andre. But you know that that's a really good point. I think uh, managers would appreciate that. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll jump into resolvable discussion with, with 20 minutes left. Um, and so I started creating these issues here. Um, and I probably will need to redo them a bit, but my original strategy was to take our existing discussions. So right now when we do discussions, we have, we do blah, and then we can start a discussion. My original thought was that we, uh, the first iteration does not change that functionality and just restyles it in a way that it will look in the future and then introduce this feature and then introduce uh, the resolvability. But um, it might change a little bit. Um, so I'm just gonna start talking and Pedro- What, just, what do you just mean by the restyling? Uh, restyling as in getting it to look like this here as, as uh, Tori designed it like this before oh, okay. we actually, uh, so, so still, still have the ability right now. So I think that will happen as part of the, um, the, that's redesign that is scheduled for the current milestone. Uh, uh, right now we're not doing anything for, for the current milestone. Yeah. It's, it's a really large issue that restyles all of the system notes and comments and discussions. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah. I think yeah. It, it no. already includes this. No, it, it won't include specifically um, this case where you have a, um, so this is what I was going back and forth with you yesterday, uh, Pedro, mm -hmm. uh, the case where I'm not, do I want to make hijack this issue and piss off Dimitri and confuse him? No, I, uh, uh, yeah, let's not do that. <laughs> uh, I'll, no, I'll just create a, I just have dummy issues here. Um, oh, this is new, edit status, that looks nice. Um, so I'm going to one of my <laughs> dummy issues. I, I like that, Victor, when, when you're just walking through the interface, you're, it's kind of a usability test. You're well, talking I mean, out loud about like, what you're seeing. Yeah, I like that. Uh, <laughs> so you can see this is my obviously my dummy issues um, but you can right now you can do this and so this is relevant for everybody else because um, oops um, so oh, did I break something oh, okay yeah so this is fine right so this is a one comment discussion which is a thing in GitLab right now mm -hmm. so inside GitLab there are standalone comments and one comment discussions, and there's obviously two comment discussions, three comment discussions, and so on and so forth. So this is a thing. Um, at a high level, we want to introduce the concept of dis resolvable discussions, and that discussion um, that you can uh, you can turn a comment into a discussion thread. So mm -hmm. those are the two goals we want to achieve. And so, so I'm going to start talking and Pedro just interrupt me because I'm, I'm, I, I, I think, I think what you're saying is that you want okay. the difference would be to encourage people to reply by having mm -hmm. the reply, uh, thingy there. Right. Or just an icon that you click if you want to reply. That's the difference, right? Um, no, no, not necessarily. Uh, there's so, so I'll, I'll approach it from a, a use case perspective first, which is, um, we want to take an existing comment right now and then and and have a this uh, have a discussion thread on it. So that's use case number one. That's the Slack use case. Really obvious. The the other use case is um, really what Dawe wanted is asking for and saying how we're different from Slack, which I agree, which I really like, which is a directed conversation. And then the terminology we're saying is that it needs to be resolved, mm -hmm. right? So we're saying that as you have a crazy conversation on a thread, we're saying like, instead of just having general comments and you don't know whether something or done on, because you can jump into one of these issues and it goes on forever. And then you're like, mm -hmm. you know, WTF. So instead of that, let's have directed conversations. And then, you know, a good UI would be like, if it's a resolved conversation, a discussion, then, you know, by default, probably it will be collapsed. And then for people later on, they don't have to look at it. 
or because the fact that it's collapsed, then you can say, Let, let's move on to the next task. So the structure imposes a, a, a best practice. And I think that's a good thing. So, so, so that's the two high level use cases, right? Like taking a comment and then just breaking out into conversation and having a um, directed conversation. And so, ha and, and so then there's more like sub use cases there. So within the having a directed conversation, I can see at least two sub use cases, right? One sub use case is right. Like Victor says, hello one. And then Sean says like, that's a great idea, Victor. Let's have a directed conversation on hello one. And then mm -hmm. he starts a conversation and, and says like, you know, now this has to be resolvable and let's talk about it. So that's use case one where Sean takes something I have and latches onto it and turns into a directed conversation. That's sub, sub use case one. Sub use case two is I'm inviting somebody to have a directed conversation. So mm -hmm. right off the bat, I'm going to do that. And then there's like sub use case number three, which is something that I think we don't want to support, but like, you know, we haven't designed this yet, which is, can we have a conversation that um, will not be resolved? Or can we have a discussion that is not resolvable? And so right now, I'm personally not wanting to do that. I think Dawei doesn't want to do that either, but you know, you have to read through his comments since it's so long ago. He, mm -hmm. he left a comment this morning as well, Mike, mine mm -hmm. this morning. Um, but I don't want to do that because to me, that just adds more complexity because you have to have more mm -hmm. toggles and you have to change things. So my thinking and design would be, you, you, can, you have to make a discussion. All discussions have to be resolvable. So there are, they're in only one of two states, either unresolved or resolved. And you can't have a third state, which is like, uh, it doesn't need resolving. And then mm -hmm. if, if given the case that it can be unresolved and resolved, then there's yet another wrinkle, which is when do you make the discussion or no, no, actually, then, then it becomes the case that if all discussions by default have to be resolved, then, um, then you have the moment something, the moment the discussion comes to life, then it must be resolvable, right? And so that's why, so this is where I'm not thinking very uh, top down from a user perspective, just from mechanically, from mm -hmm. like the components wise. And so from when I think of that perspective, um, then if you have a standalone comment, it doesn't need to be resolvable. But the moment the standalone comment becomes a discussion, it must be resolvable right away. Yes. So that's why I was trying to jump through hoops, trying to have all these weird designs, which I think you were, you, you had a, definitely better ones. But that's, that no, was but I, comment. Yeah. So um, everything you said has, is already considered and is already designed. So uh, that's why I don't... Uh, Okay, so, so I just wanted, yeah, so, so did every, so do you still agree with, not still, do you agree? Yeah, I agree with everything okay. you said, and that's exactly what we've been thinking about doing okay, since so, uh, months ago. So if that's the case, what's not clear to me, so okay. uh, what, what I was trying to nail down, um, and so I, we were having conversations, I think, on the wrong issue, um, well, not, not really. Yeah, I don't know which issue it was. Yeah, it was, the, it was this one, it was this one. <laughs> okay. So, so first of all, this mock-up is incorrect then given, well, it might be correct. So, um, so if we go with this mock-up, then this, this is a, um, this, this second row here, um, when you first load the, um, so ignore this dropdown, my interpretation of this mock-up would be then this is a standalone comment, and then this is a one comment discussion. Is that your interpretation? This is comment? one comment. Yeah, this is one comment where the author has said that this needs a resolution. Like, yeah, I they, need they've someone invited to address yeah. this. Like, yeah. we're encouraging, and this is why we display the reply area and like those buttons and, and everything like that. And on the other one, we don't. Exactly, exactly. So, and, and I think that's what you were saying, right? Exactly, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I just wanted to confirm that um, because it wasn't yeah. clear in the mock-up particular. No, it's, you're, you're, you're correct. Yeah, it's, it's not very clear because it's the same image and you don't exactly. understand. And I don't know it. if this is like, the, uh, um, like a, a front-end state or the state that when you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I see way. how that can be confusing. Right. Yeah. And then so if, if we take these two mock-ups, which I think the design is perfect, um, mm -hmm. then the, 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 the subsequent use case is 
you have a standalone comment, right? So, so mm -hmm. let me talk about the easy use case. You have a one comment discussion and it's all already resolvable. So anybody participating, they cannot change the, they cannot go back in time. They cannot turn it into a standalone comment. Um, so that's why the, the only, they can only move forward in time, which is they can just keep replying and it just becomes a resolvable, or it continues to be a resolvable discussion. The, the second use case is that you have a standalone comment. And if you have a standalone comment, then uh, the, origin, the original person who created it or anybody else can turn it into a one comment discussion. So can they transition to this stage or can they, or are they forced to transition to uh, a two comment discussion? So if I interpret this thing to say, make resolvable, if I click that button, then it mm -hmm. becomes this thing here. Yes. So if I'm Tim Smith and yeah. I just posted the first comment and I change my and, mind and I change my mind and say, well, actually this is something that I need someone to address. Yep. I, I'm the, I, this is the way I perceive it, that Tim would be the only person that can like click and say, make resolvable to show that reply field. But if you're Victor and you look at Tim's comment and you say, well, this is something that we need to discuss. You can click on that little the icon bubble. to reply. Yep. The speech bubble. Yep. Yeah. And it will turn into the third um, view there. So if in this case, you'd be Aaron. Uh, yeah, it will be Aaron, but then you would get this UI here, right? Which is also Aaron, I think. Yep. You would get this UI minus these two rows, right? Yep. So, so there, there's, there's some use cases there. So I, I'm not, I'm not, yeah. So what I wanted to do, um, so we, we should have just chatted instead of me going back and forth on issues. Um, I wanted to clarify that because there's like, there's a couple of edge cases and for one example, one edge case that I just got from you is that you don't even want to make this make resolvable available for everybody. You just want to make it available for the author of the uh, standalone comment. That, that's not, yeah, that's not clear. Exactly. That was something that uh, for me, it was implicit and okay. Uh, okay. I, I didn't have the chance to, to go in and. Okay. Make no, no, that, no, no, yeah, not, not a problem. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, no, no, what's important is like um, what I'm thinking is, is exactly what everybody's been thinking about the whole time. Um, and then so I'll, I'll just put up more issues. Or I'll take those as ex existing issues and, and put together the, and so the mock ups to, to. The only thing I wanted to, to say is that for, so in this issue that I linked in the chat right now, which is scheduled for the current milestone, where we would be already changing the design of discussions to be in line with this future uh, resolvability thing. So there, oh, okay. yeah, no, I didn't even you already that. see the, like the replies and, and okay. you can collapse replies and all of that. Okay, no, no, that's good. I, I, I didn't see that. Um, I, I, sorry, I have to, to run, but yeah. uh, if you, Victor, if you comment on the issue, I, I will see it and we can continue this discussion. Yep. Uh, but thank you for Can, raising can I just add something like in five seconds, Pedro? So you, yeah, you sure, hear. sure, sure. So the make resolvable to me sounds weird. Um, I think ma make yeah. a discussion, I think it's much better copy. And for the non-author, if you could show that on hover or whatever, on the actual comment without having to go to the drop down, just like start a discussion. And that the start of the discussion would basically open the comment box. And if they submit the comment, then it would turn into a discussion. Uh, I, yeah. I can see that process being more like straightforward for the, for the people commenting because they, they see a comment and they want to start a thread there. They will do it directly, not go to the drop down, but like straight up, but not show the complete text area as we showed there. But for the author, definitely it's more of an edit thing. It's more of a transform yeah. into a discussion. So, so Andre, if you, if you look at the, the comment I linked now in, in the chat, Yep. Uh, see, see what I, I suggested there and, okay. and like the, the flow and I maybe that could, is in line with what you're thinking. All right. And I'll read it and I'll pretty... follow up there. Perfect. Yeah. Thanks, man. Thank you. Uh, see you. All right. Um, that's all I had. I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable there. Anything else from the remaining four people here? Uh, I, I just wanted to share, Victor, that the front end team has now started working with boards more and like each mm. front end group now has their own boards and they're like a full grown 
global front end board. Oh, so cool. it's more it's more of appreciation and thank you for all the effort that we're doing on the board side because it's well it's your your deadly. your team is making it not me right <laughs> no, no, no but i mean because we're recognizing the value of the boards yeah i yeah, know that does give feedback appreciate it's it. spreading it's spreading <laughs> we'll get there we'll get there yeah that's appreciate it i don't have anything else no, that, that's great feedback thank you all right um i will let you folks go and talk to you next time <laughs>